Hey gamers, welcome back to another episode of Hotfix, your daily dose of gaming news. Things are a little bit different this week as I'm going to be doing a giveaway. As you can probably tell, the point of the Hotfix videos are to generate discussion, hence why I'm talking about all these news stories and sometimes leaving my opinions on them. So in order to win this giveaway throughout this week, Tuesday to Friday, I want you to leave a comment on the video generating discussion. What's new story affected you the most? What strongest opinion do you have? The comment that generates the most discussion this week, I'll be choosing on Saturday, will win their choice of Super Meat Boy, The Stanley Parable, or Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP. Originally, Guacamelee was also offered, but I just really double-checked it and Humble Bundle lied to me. So it's going to be those three games. But awesome, yeah. My name is Max. Yesterday was March 27th, 2017, and let's get right into it. So last week, a Destiny 2 poster leaked, and yesterday, Bungie officially announced Destiny 2, probably because of the poster leak. It turns out the poster was legit because the the logo looks very similar to the one found on there. We don't know much about the game. All they did was tweet this image on the Destiny the Game Twitter, which I don't even follow, huh? So yeah, look, there's the Traveler. There's that weird kind of like map design they normally have going, the logo, and then the last city just burning. So my guess is that this game is going to be quite a bit different than the first time. Like, think shit's gonna go down, as it should. This is a sequel, up the ante, and actually give us a story this time, please. I was discussing this with some of my coworkers over at the Coalition, and we're in a bunch of, like, kind of optimistic, but not expecting much, because Bungie kind of let us down last time. And I know it makes sense that they would take that into account and really make a good story this time, but history has shown in gaming, movies, all forms of entertainment that that's not always the case. So we'll have to see. Exciting news either way. Don't forget, the game is supposed to come out in like September, this fall for sure, so that's awesome. The long-awaited update to Final Fantasy XV's Chapter 13 arrived yesterday for free. It's actually going to be called Chapter 13 Verse 2, and this time you'll be able to control Gladiolus and Ignis through the city of Insomnia? Yes. Back when they got separated from Noctis after the bus fell, and when you had to use that ring to destroy everything, and it was just that kind of weird stealth chapter. I really liked it. I know a lot of people didn't, though, and the story was kind of weird there. We'll also be getting more information on Ravis and Idolus. Chocobos can also roam free now. Apparently there were places they couldn't go to beforehand. And also, episode Gladiolus drops today as you're watching this, which is pretty awesome. So those who have the season pass, that's there for you. Go check it out. A new Valkyria game is coming to consoles this June, entitled Valkyria Revolution. This time around, it's going to be an action game, whereas normally the Valkyria Chronicles games are tactical RPGs. The game is coming to PS4, PS Vita, and Xbox Xbox One, though only the PS4 and Xbox One editions will be getting physical versions. The game is going to be $40 across the board, which is awesome. There will also be a deluxe edition of the game coming called the Vanargand Edition, which will be limited to pre-orders and launch day shipments, according to the press release. Included in that edition will be a 1.5-inch pin inscribed with the Vanargard's Army Coat of Arms, a 12-song soundtrack CD, and a special box. Awesome, be sure to check that out, Valkyria fans. Fire Emblem Heroes is going to be getting an update in April that matches massively raises the stamina cap. Basically, it's going to be raised from 50 to 99. There are, of course, other things coming with this update, like the addition of permadeath, but the stamina cap seems to be the highlight here. However, permadeath isn't really a joke either. Uh, the classic Fire Emblem feature will make holding onto those randomly collected heroes much harder. If they die on certain maps, they're dead for good, so you're gonna have to be much more careful picking out your loadouts and everything like that. Cool, looking forward to jumping back in for the April update. The PS4 Pro will finally support Support 4K videos in its media player app. The update actually went live yesterday, and it allows PS4 Pro owners to play 4K MP4 files, providing they have a 4K TV, of course. And it doesn't matter if the videos are streamed or saved on a USB stick, both will work. This actually puts the PS4 Pro a bit ahead of the Xbox One S, because the Xbox One S was the first 4K compatible gaming console, but it can only play back some 4K videos encoded in H.265. It doesn't support 4K in H.264, which is the most common codec. Like hell, I export these videos in H.264. Also on the PS4 Pro, the media player app will only read the videos on the USB storage if it's formatted as an additional storage for the PS4, not just a general USB drive. If you're using an external hard drive as an expansion of your PS4's internal storage, that USB drive can only be used to save games and apps. It can't be used to save and play videos, which is a shame. And lastly, today's update also enables playback of 4K via our content, which is awesome. Bethesda and Arcane's upcoming Prey reboot is getting some interesting marketing here. Starting April 4th and going through to April 27th, the 
theater chain Alamo Drafthouse will be hosting four movies that Bethesda and Arcane have picked. These movies will be detailing all the inspirations behind this new Prey game. So these four movies are going to consist of Moon, Starship Troopers, Total Recall, and The Matrix. Fucking dope four movies. You can watch them each one by one, or you can buy tickets for all four and get an exclusive Prey poster. That's dope. Those who are interested can take a look at the official Prey site for locations and more info on the screenings. Bethesda is also going to be bringing the game to Austin, San Francisco, LA, and New York during those screenings. You'll be able to play the game there and also enter to win a Prey-themed PS4 or Xbox One. The events will be free, and damn, I wish there was one in Chicago. And lastly for today, the VR horror title Wilson's Heart will be coming to the Oculus Rift next month. Coming to the Oculus Rift on April 25th, Wilson's Heart draws on monster movies and horror elements for its psychological story. The game makes use of the Oculus Touch controllers to explore the black and white hospital by solving puzzles, fighting through enemies, or interacting with the world around them. Cool, the game looks interesting. It looks a bit Frankenstein inspired so far from these two stills that I'm seeing on here. But cool, I've really been into horror games lately. This is something that would definitely intrigue me once I get my hands on VR. Well, yeah, yeah, folks that's about it for yesterday's news make sure to like the video down below if this recap helped you leave your thoughts in the comments below as well don't forget about that giveaway this weekend try and generate some really good discussion if you can also if you haven't already be sure to click that subscribe button down below for free daily news updates straight to your inbox every tuesday to friday it also just helps me out a lot all right well i'll see you guys tomorrow this is max signing off